Hello, this is Paul Yasmin, and this is a video blog that I'm going to call on mixing, mixing equipment, and um, my job, basically. As, as as I have said, it's today. It's uh, June 10. It's 8 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed soon, but I'm going to do this video blog because I want to talk about what I've been doing. I'm Amazon. Was my third week of my new job. As I said, I work work in production. I work at a company that make premixes that they sell to to customers basically. Um yeah. So so yeah. Um at my company basically my my job as a production worker consists of weighting the materials, um loading it into the blender. And I'm not talking about a little blender that you have in your kitchen. No, I'm talking about a huge ass freaking uh, blender that for example like um, you know if you love cooking you know that you add materials so like for example if you are cooking into a pot and all that stuff so imagine doing that but uh, at a larger scale that you are talking about like big bags of like material that you are loading like hundreds of bags into a big blender so basically that's what I do and I'm going to post some videos um, for reference so that you can go and see some of the uh, blenders that I'm talking about in this video. So in my company, I, um, the first two weeks, I was my, working with my term. My term went on vacation, so this week yeah, they've been putting me, throwing me into different areas, into different mixers. For me as a chemical engineer, uh, which I have an education chemical engineer, so I found it interesting because I'm getting to see different configurations of Blender, and um, the process in the company is basically the same. So you, you get the you get your batch data, which is the recipe that for your going to mix. You weigh the materials, the amount of material that you need, and you load it in the Blender, and then when you finish loading all the material that you need uh, for the uh, production, you mix it. And then uh, you check whether it's homogeneous. Uh, the mix is uh, homogeneous, but and let me see. Yeah, it's an homogeneous mix. I'm pretty sure. I want to make sure I'm using the right term. You know. Uh, yeah, it has to be homogeneous ch chemistry. Yeah, I'm reviewing chemistry. I haven't done too much chemistry in a while, so I'm reviewing that. Yeah, homogeneous mix. So a mixture that is uniform in its properties throughout given samples so basically what you're trying to do is like in the, so in the case where you're using powder mixes so it's a lot of solids so when you mix it you want to make sure that the mix is going to be barely distinguishable uh, from the face basically um, so yeah um, anyway so once you check that the mix it looks okay then you start uh, discharging and then and packing which is according to a customer specification so that's basically it it doesn't change you can go to any uh, from what I see you know like uh, I can be in any room and it's the process is going to be the same what is going to change is how much the amounts that I'm that we're going to be mixing in that particular room because honestly like the mixing room that I was in the beginning it's smaller the, the the mixer is smaller compared to the mixer that I was working um, this past two days, and honestly, it's it, it's it was a huge mixer. <laughs> like I'm telling you, huge, like big as huge. Like it's the way to put it, it's almost has it was bigger than my room basically, you know, and uh, so you can imagine the order of magnitude of this. Uh, uh, these tanks and uh, the, the the amount of product that you can probably be even making almost. Um, anyway, so the first mixer for those that missed my previous video blog. So the first mixer and this is uh, because all all of it is powder um, powder mixture. Most of the the stuff that we have uh, the raw materials we do make some uh, liquid mixes, but most of it is. Uh, Powder, powder, powdery. So it's a uh, solid mixing, mixing of solids, and because they don't get together, they don't get clumped. You know, this is what is known as non-cohesive solids, basically. 
Now, um, I, I, I learned something. I was pretty afraid now about the, um, how you set up the, uh, the sampling protocol to make sure that, that, that to make sure the mixer performance. And I'm, I, I, I'm kind of go, going to read that because like, I know that we take a number of samples and we try to, I'm kind of curious to see what the lab does with that, but like, that's something totally different from what I do. Um, what I would be doing, but like during my, my work, we take some samples of the mix so to make sure QAQC, you know, that, that the mix is coming out the way that it's supposed to be coming out, you know. Anyway, so yeah, the first room that I worked with on my first week was with a tumbling mixer. A tumbling mixer is basically one that spins in, an, in its axis. So if you imagine that, if you imagine this to be the mixer. And basically, I have uh, uh, I have something here that that holds it. So basically, what the mixer is doing is going like this. That's a tumbling mixer. So you have the powder, and basically the motion of gravity is helping like mix whatever material is in there. In addition to that, the mixer has a bar that you can spin it. So inside will be also helping like besides the same motion, you will have the bar inside uh, rotating at the same time. Um, now the mixer that that I was working in the room is a V mixer, and uh, I showed the picture. The V mixer is the one um, here, and basically you load it on the top. It can be the side or the other side. Um, when you are loading, because it's a food industry, so you pass it through a sieve to prevent any foreign objects from getting into the mix. You don't want to kill people. Or poison people, and then um, after you mix, and you can see the bar that I'm talking about in in the in the diagram, you know, inside the tank. That bar is inside the tank, so it's like if you had extra vision, you will be able to see that bar. And then after mixing, you discharge it from the bottom. Gravity. Um, there is a video that I'm going to post of uh, that will show you what the how the mixer that mixer looks like. The other mixer that I was working this week, it's a big mixer, you know, that, this is a standard, you know, I'm, I'm talking about sensitive information here. This is very standard. You know, the videos are in, in YouTube. So if it's there, it becomes a standard. It's like information that, you know, you can learn, you know, it's not a trade secret or anything that I'm talking about, you know, and Everybody that works in this kind of jobs knows that mixing is like, you know, it's a science. And if you go to school or if you do research, you can probably find that information. So I'm not talking about trade secrets here. So yeah, so I'm okay. Anyway, the mixer that I was working, it was a, it had a little bit co a different configuration, configuration, and it's almost like a tank basically. And you have in the top, the bottom. So it, it look, I apologize, it's my own drawing. I didn't have a picture in my book. So I decided to draw it myself. So this is the front view. Up here, you get the loading platform. This is where you loaded, and um, and then um, so in here you will be loading the material through there. In the mixer, you will have a bar in the middle um, because this mixer doesn't move, so it says it will stick there. What moves is the bar in the middle, and that bar has a series of arms that kind of like scrape and they are um, put at, at a distance I'm pretty sure that it's at the same distance so when you cover the whole tank and you don't leave any residue around and the bar is spinning and that's what causes the mixing of the materials that you put in in the in the in the tank in the mixer and uh, and then for discharging so you will discharge it that, that down here so yeah basically um, so yeah, I will put the video for for I will not put up. I can't find one with uh, with this particular configuration, but I will put the in the in the link below a video for a ribbon blender, which is similar to it's similar to this, but instead of uh, having this um, having that kind of uh, configuration for the arms, it has like a ribbon or two ribbons, and you will get to see it, but it will look something like this. Like, yeah, that's a ribbon, a ribbon mixer, you know, and it's called a ribbon because in the inside it looks like a ribbon basically. 
there are also different like you know depending on what you're mixing you know if, if you're mixing something more difficult that you will need more power there are other things that you can play with and i've been free down a little bit in here but you can you can actually change the the paddles or the or the blades in the mixer and that way it will generate more uh dispersion and it will have sometimes more force and like some of the configurations in here you know this for like material that might be a little bit have more viscosity and then also the other thing like for example and when i was working in puerto rico for the, the unilever best food even though i was an environmental engineer i got the to take a i was working around and i went to the mixing room and the mixing room was kind of like one that had like two arms big arms that would go like this and that was what would mix a home mix because the mix was like very 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 hard to mix um but yeah um so yeah so that's about it you know like it's mixers are not difficult to operate you know in my opinion um they're relatively easy uh cleaning is a pain in the neck because you know we're talking that you have almost like a a huge equipment that you have to clean plus the room and all that stuff so but the part of like loading the material and all the stuff that's pretty easy and you know it's uh, it's interesting to see that and it's interesting to see on the product is mixing it's like wow it's almost ma like magic you know um but yeah but it so far it's it's been interesting just to have my job and and and, and see some of the stuff you know big tanks in there you know it's kind of makes me curious about like designing and also it's interesting to see that for me it's interesting to see the configuration of like how they put the equipment and, and all that stuff you know it for most part it's almost the same configuration you know the rooms are well, some rooms are bigger than others but like it's almost a the configuration is almost the same and the process is almost the same except it's uh, as I said the, the scale that that you're using you know um, so you're having different sizes of mixers in there um, and that's about it you know anyway um, if you have any questions or comments about this video blog or you want to learn more you want me to talk about something different please let me know you know I'm more than willing to share my my expertise and my knowledge and I hope that this makes you rethink about the food industry, you know. I know that also you can see a lot of like mixers if you go on uh, how it's made. Like if you want to see how frozen pizzas are made, you can see that. Um, you, you you will get to see a few of the equipment that they had. You know, it's pretty neat to watch this kind of stuff because, you know. I mean, at least I sometimes ask myself like, oh, how this is made? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this is made, you know. Or how these things are mixed, you know. So it's kind of neat to, 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 to learn about these things, you know. I know that I have seen a few of those things, so I can tell by, yeah. But it's like, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not a tiny part of like what I'm doing, what I, what I used to do in school and uh, some of the things that I have seen, you know. I have gotten the chance when I was working for, for the government, I was working for the DEC. And um, I got the chance to visit... Um, a few landfills in New York State and that was interesting. I also got the chance to visit um, a few of the waste or energy facilities. The landfills, you know, the, it's, I wish I could put some pictures, you know, but the landfills are interesting to, to, to see the construction, you know. Um, but it's almost like a big pile of a mountain of trash, you know. It's like, it's, it's like we decided to take the trash and just like rip a mountain open and just like put the trash there and then put the mountain back and uh, and uh it's it's just it just amazed me you know um waste energy are very interesting because they're almost like a um coal fired power plant basically the fuel is uh, different you know but they have the same uh operation basically they have a the 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 trash gets picked up goes into hopper it goes into the the boiler and the burner which basically burns the trash that generates uh uh, heat that heat gets trapped into um, it depends on the configuration you can have a boiler that will that will take the boiled water uh, to a very high heat basically turn it into um, into steam that steam is uh, can be used to power 
uh, a turbine and then the water will condense back and will be recycled back or you can use the gases to power a turbine and then those gases will go into um, to get clean you know you can't destroy the gas just by it is because there will be a relation to environmental regulations and so you need to treat those gases and all that stuff which is similar to what the power plants do you know uh, the power plant that burns fossil, fossil fuel um, by fossil fuel I mean like either carbon or, or petroleum you will treat the gas before you actually um, release them into the atmosphere yeah you're going to generate CO2 and that's a greenhouse gas but you know what it's the way that power is made and if you do if you don't want that then install uh, then promote green energy like solar or wind energy you know um, which i agree that we need to improve to to try to use alternative sources to of energy like wind and solar and uh, nuclear is a tricky one and i'm opposed to that one because it's like the nuclear waste it's very difficult to dispose of and um, and then of course after seeing what happened in Japan with uh, Fukushima plant you know it's it, it's as it's scary what can happen if one of those plants or a catastrophe hits a particular area and um, that's why I don't like nuclear energy uh, yeah we need to think more energy sources uh, but yeah that's a different topic and I think I just got sidetracked completely from mixing to like something totally different but it's like it's 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 been interesting and I don't get to talk to uh, to people about these things you know um but yeah um and then also there's a uh, uh, wastewater treatment plants you know like ever wonder how the water what happens after you flush the toilet yeah I know I know what happens you know and I, and I had visited a few plants in uh, Puerto Rico and I visited a few plants in Washington DC one time when I was working for the EPA region 3 um, I also visited uh, water filtration plants which is basically tap water um, I know that the treatment processes and also I have visited I visited a few ones in Puerto Rico I went to to, to, to get samples from them um, it's it's interesting basically you know and um, what else uh, anyway that's all I got for today you know and if, as I said if you guys have any questions would like to see anything specific in, in uh, my video blogs just let me know you know Anyway, I better get to sleep. So, bye-bye. Hey. -bye.